Good morning, this is, uh, I'm Bryce Kirkpatrick with Real Turf Solutions. I'm the turf manager here and uh, I just want to kind of go over this morning with you a little bit of information about our uh, Hunter Pro C controller. I uh, just kind of want to show you a few things, a few tips, a few ideas of how to operate your controller if you have one of these at your home or a sports field or anywhere you may have one of these. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up this controller and take a look at some of the basic features of this Pro C controller. Um, on the front screen you'll have different options. You'll have run, which is the position you want to put this in. Uh, whenever you actually set everything up and that will allow the controller to actually go through each station at the set time um, But in order to get that controller set up to do these features You want to go ahead and turn the dial over here to your set current date and time um, At this time your screen will start flashing the actual year uh, Typically it's going to be off by a lot So what you'll do is you want to mash either the plus or the minus symbol um, and by doing that you'll actually start scrolling down to uh, the year 2020 uh, which is the days, the uh, year's date, and then once you do that, you'll hit the plus sign, uh, and what that'll do then is that'll take you to the month setting, and in the month setting, uh, it's going to be basically the same as the year. You'll take the plus or the minus sign, and you'll go up. Uh, today is March, so we'll want to go to three, um, and then once you get the month, then you'll want to go one time with the right arrow, and that'll give you your day will start flashing. Uh, and then kind of the same thing, you'll want to put, take a plus or the minus sign depending on where it's at and what day of the week. Uh, right now the day is the tenth, so we'll go ahead and go on up to the tenth. Uh, once that is set up, uh, you've got a three for your month and the day is the tenth. Then what you'll do is you'll hit the arrow to the right one more time. And then then is your uh, time setting. And then right now it's flashing on your AM or PM. Uh, if you're in the morning time, afternoon time, it kind of depends on when you're setting one up. You want to go ahead and set that for whatever time. Uh, you also have a 24 hour feature for some of you military folks that may want to use that feature. Uh, you have that ability. Um, but you'll want to go ahead and set it to AM because this current time is 928. So now we'll hit the right arrow one more time um, and then put the plus sign to go to number nine. Um, and then from there, scroll over and you'll want to scroll down until the time is 928. So we'll scroll on down. And you can hold these, hold these, and they'll go a lot faster than pushing the button each time. Uh, once you have your date and time set up, uh, you'll hit there one more time, and that'll take you back to the year screen. And so at that point, you un you know that everything's set up properly. Uh, the next option you want to be able to go to from there is you want to go to your set watering start times. Uh, we typically recommend that you start watering most of your irrigation zones um, sometime early in the morning to allow the water to get on the turf. Um, before the sun comes up and that way most of the moisture that gets on can go down in the roots where it needs to before the sun comes up and dries all the moisture off. Um, it's kind of the same setup when you get ready to set up your uh, setup water start times. Uh, your screen will start flashing the actual hour and the uh, minute that you have on here and you can uh, you can actually go through the process of scrolling with the plus sign or the minus sign which will allow you to adjust the time between 12 o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at night and so on from there and once you have a time set up from that you will want to uh, hit the right arrow and then that'll allow you to kind of check and make sure there's no other start times because there's you have different programs you have program A, B, and C um, some even have D and the way you check if, if a program is there's a button to the side that has PRG on it and you'll hit that button one time and it'll go to program B um, and then you hit it another time, and it'll go to program C. Um, and if the controller has that feature with most Pro C dues, you can hit it one, it's, it's going to go to be C. Um, so you'll have A, B, and C, and each one of those programs has um, up to eight start times on that uh, feature. And so that allows you to have multiple start times, uh, which is typically good for uh, flower bed areas if you want to, as far as like ir drip irrigation, because drip irrigation typically needs to run for at least an hour or so. Um, and then when your turf, you can have those set another program time. And then that way you can have your turf heads come on early in the morning. That way they can go ahead and water and before the sun comes up. And then once the sun starts coming up, it's not going to hurt to have that drip irrigation running. So you can have that set to come on, uh, let's say 10 or 11 o'clock in, in the afternoon because most folks that come to your house is not going to be affected by drip irrigation. Uh, once you had this all set up and you had the start time that you want set up, uh, whether it's one or multiple, uh, then the next thing you want to do is you want to turn over to the set station run times. Um, the set station run time kind of goes about the same way that everything else is. 
Uh, you'll use the plus and minus and the arrows to the right and left. Um, and you'll also use the program button to uh, set this feature up because um, you basically have the ability to do the same thing. Um, that allows you to set your drip irrigation to program A, um, station, one, station one, and you can do program B, station two, and so on from there. And so what you'll do is right now we have station one on the screen and it's flashing uh, an hour and four minutes. Um, and in order to adjust that time, you hit the minus sign and it takes you back to zero. And then from there, you can go all the way up one, two minutes, three minutes. And if you want to go to 30 minutes, you can hold the plus sign down and it'll spin a little faster and allows you to kind of get that minute mark faster. Um, most irrigation systems that have turf heads, uh, which is a, basically our rotor heads that we uh, install when we put in irrigation systems, uh, we recommend those to run anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, uh, depending on the size of the area and the coverage you have. Um, typically on your spray heads, you want to set those on uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes um, because those spray heads typically put out more water volume in less time than a rotor head does because a rotor head typically goes from uh, left to right in a 360 or 90 degree motion or 180 motion, depends on how it's set up and where it's at in the yard. Um, but once you get your time set up and everything adjusted to which zones you want, how long you want these zones to run for, then you'll go down here one more time to your set days to water. Um, once you get to this screen, you'll have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be on the screen. And typically um, on a Pro C, you'll have water droplets that'll show above the day, and it'll also have like a circle around it with a line through. Um, and so what that indicates is that you don't want it to water on that day. Um, so right now we're flashing on Monday and let's just say we don't want to use that day. You hit the minus sign and what that does is then that would take that day off and then it moves you to Tuesday. And let's just say you want Tuesday to run so then you would hit the plus sign and that would allow Tuesday to be set. And then now you're on Wednesday and do if you don't want it to water on Wednesday you would hit the minus sign and kind of so on from there. And, and typically we recommend at least three to four days a week depending on uh, how long you have each zone set up. Um, typically when we start off in the springtime, two to three days is typically going to be fine. Um, and then once we start getting into the summer months when it's starting to be 95 and plus degrees outside and we're not getting a, very, a lot of rain with the weather, uh, we recommend we're in a little bit longer times on their zones and a little bit long, maybe more days in a row. Um, once you get your days set up to, um, to be watered, Pretty much after that, everything's pretty much set up. You can turn back to run then. And what that'll do is that controller will be set with the time, date, month, and year of, what, of, the, of the current time, date, month, and year. And then you'll also have a set for each day to water. Um, and it'll show right here what day it is on the screen, which is Tuesday. And you know that I have it set up to run on Wednesday. So you can rest assured this controller is going to start running on Wednesday morning the way you set it up to work. Um, the other features that this uh, unit has is it also allows you to do um, manual off stations. And what that does, that allows you to kind of just turn it there and you can actually hit the, and then turn it back to run. And what it'll do is it'll actually start running through the zones. Um, that way, if you just kind of want to manually turn it on one day um, because you think it may need a little bit more water, you had that ability to do that. Um, and you can actually adjust the time on each one if you want to do that feature, or it's flashing on zone station one now, and I can just hit the minus sign and take it down to 25 minutes. And then if I want to, I can go over to the right with the right arrow, and it'll take me to zone two, and I can add another minute to it or two minutes to it, whatever I want to do. Um, that's that feature with all stations. Uh, that's typically a feature we use sometimes uh, as contractors when we come out and do a service call. Uh, we'll use that feature um, sometimes to run through everything. Um, we also have the ability to use what they call the manual single station. Um, and what that does is that allows you to only control one station at a time. Um, so typically, like let's just say you've got some plants in the backyard that look a little droopy and you go, I want to turn that zone on for a little bit longer today. Uh, you have the ability to turn the manual single station, um, scroll over to the right with the right arrow or to the left if it's on towards the back and it'll take you towards the last zone in the station. And then you can actually adjust the time or if you want to. And then once you do that, you just turn the feature back to run. And then the, the zone that you set to run will, will automatically start coming on and watering for the set time. And then once that controller runs that zone, you don't have to worry about it no more. It's going to be set back to run. And then it'll pick up the next watering day like it should be. Um, 
You have an option on here for a set pump operation, but typically that pot operation is for those that live on lakes um, or live on a pond or somewhere they may use a pump, a uh, submersible pump um, to feed their irrigation system. So typically most homeowners that live in the, in the city limits that are off uh, city water or off of well water, they don't typically have to use that feature. Um, but one way to kind of know more about your controller, to understand how many zones you have and stuff such as that, is you would take this cover right here and you open it up. Um, and these controllers are done by modules. Um, each module is going to have at least three to four different um, settings on here. Like this Pro C is currently only got three, three, and then of course you have the ability to do three more up here. So in all, you'll end up having 12 total stations um, with a common and a master valve, a uh, master valve simply for um, if you have an actual cutoff that would actually allow you to, to shut the water off manually without having to worry about shutting it off with the city and cutting your house off. Um, and then your common is used so you can uh, make sure that the power reaches the source of the uh, valves. Um, you also have the ability up here to add in two sensors. Um, the sensors that are compatible with this controller, uh, you have a rain click uh, sensor, which is basically we mount that sensor in a location in the property and that sensor allows this controller to communicate with that sensor that will tell it when it starts raining and this controller is running that day. As soon as that sensor gets wet, it will send a communication to the controller and tell it to shut off that, hey, it's, it's watering today. Um, and then, so that way your irrigation is not running while it's raining outside. Um, but once you get to the point where it quits raining and the sensor dries back out. The controller goes back to normal setting and it runs like it's supposed to as long as that sensor is not wet and it's not raining outside. You also have a rain click sensor um, that kind of, I mean, it's a freeze sensor which actually works kind of the same way. Uh, it's basically once the temperature is dropping to a certain level, this controller will communicate with it, telling it not to run that morning. Because uh, sometimes people typically um, you don't want to necessarily run irrigation all winter long, but you have you have flower annual flowers and different plant material, you might want to put a little water on depending on how dry conditions are throughout the winter months. Um, because most things are dormant, but they still like a little moisture. You can use this controller with a, rain, a freeze click and it'll allow you to do that without worried about uh, running when it's freezing outside. Um, you can also hook up a, um, a flow sensor to this. Um, and other kind of features that makes it great is uh, these modules actually slide out and so if a controller starts having problems, typically what we do is the first thing we check is the controller as a, as a service call. And sometimes we find out that these modules are bad and what this controller allows you to pop these modules out. And they're a little hard sometimes, um, but you can pop this module out and basically the, sometimes these go bad. And so all we have to do is get another one from the store and then pop it back in and then hook our wires back up to it. And typically sometimes that fix the problem with the irrigation zone not running. Um, if that's not the case sometimes, then sometimes it's out in the field and that's the reason why we ask that you, you know, give us a call and if you ever have any questions about your irrigation system because that, our guys are trained to kind of diagnose from this point of the, of the irrigation system all the way into the field to, in order to find out exactly what's going on because uh, sometimes it can be as simple as this. Uh, being a module being bad or it can be your screens being bad and if the screens bad It's kind of the same thing as a module. We have the ability to unplug this here and then pull this hinge and this actual faceplate comes off and we can replace this faceplate without having to replace the whole box um, Which is pretty neat about the Pro C that allows us to do that um, but Pretty much, that's pretty much all the basic stuff that we have involved with this. Um, you have the way the ability to do the bypass at, on the sensor. That way, if some reason you want to irrigate one day after it rained for like, let's say five minutes, but the controller's not going to do it based on the sensor, you can turn this up here to bypass. And what that does is then that turns off basically this controller communicating with that sensor and it'll allow you to go ahead and water what, even though it rained for five minutes that morning. Um, but that's pretty much most of the basic features of a Pro-C controller. Uh, we appreciate your business here at Real Turf Solutions, and we hope that we can help you out if we can. Thank you.